Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's video focuses on the Israeli Ballistic Missile Defense System, often associated with the Iron Dome, which actually represents only its lower tier component. Israel's efforts to develop a comprehensive ballistic missile defense system began in response to the threat posed by Iraqi and Syrian ballistic missiles during the 1980s. In the late 1980s, the Strategic Aero Program was initiated to create a counter against those weapons, which could potentially be equipped with chemical or biological payloads. By the time of the 1991 Gulf War, the only surface-to-air missile system in Israel with credible counter-ballistic missile capabilities was the Patriot system, recently delivered by the United States. The existing Hawk system of that era had no credible capability against a missile like the R-17 Elbrus, commonly known as Scud, which had a high terminal velocity exceeding Mach 3. Thus, the Scud required a missile interceptor capable of engaging a target at such high speeds during its terminal stage. The Patriot system, with high kinematics and a maximum velocity of around Mach 5, could engage incoming ballistic missiles at higher altitudes and longer ranges than hoping for any lucky shot by the Hawk system. However, the Iraqi strikes with modified Al Hussein Scud variants against Israel in 1991 necessitated the launch of several Patriots per Scud to achieve an effective high kill probability, with reports indicating an average of three Patriots per destroyed Scud. This rate was sustainable for Israel during the conflict because Iraq's 600-kilometer range modified Scuds, capable of reaching Israel from Iraq, were imports from the Soviet Union and limited in quantity. Following this experience, Israeli efforts in the Aero program intensified, leading to the first test launches of the Aero prototype in the early 1990s. The first prototypes were roughly modeled on a layout similar to the US Sprint missile and later Soviet interceptors of the S-300 Vi family. The evolution of the first prototype variant was the Aero 1, which was a significant advancement when compared to the Patriot, propelling its kill stage to a burnout velocity nearing Mach 9. This allowed the Arrow 1 to engage incoming ballistic missile warheads or whole missiles at much higher altitudes than the Patriot, providing greater territorial protection coverage. Israel's small geographic size allowed a limited number of Arrow batteries to protect the entire country effectively. Hence, the Arrow 1's range of approximately 50 kilometers was sufficient to defend the width of Israel's airspace against ballistic missiles. The solutions developed for the Arrow 1 were high-end, reflecting an era when countries threatening Israel with ballistic missiles relied on imports from nations like Russia, ex-Soviet states, or the People's Republic of Korea. The high cost of these imported ballistic missiles allowed Israel, with its comparatively substantial financial resources, to develop a high-capability, albeit expensive, ballistic missile defense interceptor. One such feature was the movable flex seal thrust vectoring nozzle on the first stage, as compared to the aerodynamic steering on the initial prototype and missiles like Patriot. The first stage also required a relatively large diameter and weight due to its high thrust and performance requirements. The Aero 1 reportedly had a second kill stage propelled by a solid propellant sustainer motor featuring a second flex seal thrust vectoring system. To mitigate costs, the seeker used an imaging infrared system instead of an active radar homing seeker. Its Green Pine L-band AESA guidance radar was also lower in cost as more advanced solutions in the S or even X-band. However, the low resolution meant that the missile could only be brought coarsely on interception course. A terminal sensor was necessary to roughly align it towards the target early on. The solution was an imaging seeker placed in the two prominent triangle-shaped protrusions at the kill stage. The aerodynamic shape meant that the sensor could work at the high speeds, which cause high temperatures, for the required seconds of the alignment phase. For the earlier phase of flight, the sensor was protected by an aerothermal shroud, protecting it before being jettisoned. However, the main targeting sensor for the terminal endgame phase was a different one in the nose. The aerodynamic and thermal protective nose tip would be jettisoned very late, at high altitudes, exposing the high-performance multispectral infrared seeker to lock onto the incoming ballistic missile target and guide the interceptor. With this second seeker, the tracking algorithm would allow the Arrow 1 to discriminate between a warhead, 
an empty booster stage, or decoys. This complex solution of initial command guidance, then initial alignment sensor, and finally terminal high-quality sensor was necessary due to the high speeds and dynamic pressures the Aero 1 was exposed to. The large missile size allowed for a substantial high-explosive fragmentation warhead, meaning a direct hit was not necessary to neutralize the hard target. The high lethality requirement of the warhead against the targeted ballistic missile warhead was a lesson learned by the rather poor performance of the Patriot during the attacks in 1991. Additionally, Israel's efforts focused on developing the Green Pine Early Warning and Target Engagement Radar, assisted by U.S. expertise. The Green Pine Radar, with its large aperture and active electronically steered array ASA, operating in the L-band, could detect and track ballistic missiles at much greater distances than the Patriot radar. With the elimination of the Iraqi threat, Israel had time to refine the Aero-1 system and address the emerging Iranian threat posed by the Shahab-3 missile in the late 1990s. These developments incentivized Israel to pursue a more cost-effective solution than the Aero-1, yet capable of countering the faster Shahab-3 missile, leading to the development of the Aero-2 system. One key advantage gained from the Aero-1 development was that the Green Pine radar, despite its large and static nature, provided a very high performance. The early warning capability of this radar allowed the missile interceptor to be launched towards the anticipated impact region of the incoming ballistic missile, somewhat reducing the kinematic requirement for dashing at maximum speed to reach the targeted region rapidly. This relaxation of requirements, combined with further miniaturization of missile interceptor subsystems, enabled the Aero 2 to be significantly smaller and also less expensive than the Aero 1. This allowed for better volume production with the aid of U.S. production capacities, whereas the Aero 1 is not known to have ever been produced in quantity. Although details about the Aero system are scarce, it is known that one reason for the reduction in missile size compared to the Aero 1 was the development of an improved directional fragmentation warhead with a sufficiently high fragmentation density and effect to neutralize hard targets like ballistic missile warheads. Another objective with the Aero 2 was to outsource about 50% of its production to the United States, allowing the use of U.S. foreign military aid for its volume production. As quantity became a key concern, Leveraging U.S. financial and technological capabilities was a key goal for the program. The Aero 2 achieved operational capability in the year 2000, and by 2003, Iran, Israel's new main adversary, had begun volume production of its Shahab-3 and later Ghadr family of medium-range ballistic missiles. The goal was to have a ballistic missile defense system with enough interceptors to deter Iran's use of these missiles. The Aero 2, with its high-altitude thrust vectoring capable second-stage kill vehicle, could target all Scud variants of that era, as well as Iran's Shahab-3 and Ghadr medium-range ballistic missiles, provided they employed unitary warheads or atmospheric-released submunitions. The situation looked different if instead exo-atmospheric-released high-dispersion submunitions were used, a solution Iran developed for the Ghadr family to defeat the Aero 2. The Super Green Pine radar, improved to operate in the S-band, also gave the Aero 2 better discrimination performance against decoys and boosters. It also allowed to distinguish individual re-entry vehicles, launched in simultaneous salvos in a better way than the L-band Green Pine. Israel's Terra dual-band radar system, which includes the UHF-band Ultra and the S-band Spectra radars, further improved the Aero 2 on the sensor side with improved performance against very low radar cross-section re-entry vehicles. The US ANTPY-2 radar further improved the robust sensor structure by adding a radar with a albeit limited mobile deployment capability and improved discrimination performance against decoys. The validation of Aero 2's performance was intensively tested via the specifically developed Sparrow family of air-launched ballistic missile target and decoy missiles. Those large, realistic decoys would simulate strikes by all Scud variants, the Shahab-3 and the Ghadr series. The tests against those decoys were a key element for the system to validate a credible capability against real threats. The first successful combat use of the Aero-2 was against a Syrian S-200 surface-to-air missile that lost lock and entered deep into Israeli airspace towards its sensitive Dimona nuclear weapon-related site. But the most significant use under real combat conditions was during Iran's April 2024 strikes on Israel. While details are unknown, the around 50 ballistic missiles that would be interceptable by the Aero 2 
certainly meant that a notable amount of interceptors were used during that night. Generally, the high cost of the Arrow 2 missile lead to the development of the Arrow 3 and David's sling missile defense systems. The Arrow 2 is a formidable, high-end, complex, and heavy solution, but it can't compete in the economic field anymore due to the advent of low-cost missiles like Iran's Dezful and Rezvan. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.